Starting lineups are being announced here at Bank OZK Arena. We'll give you those momentarily. But first, let's look at players to watch for both schools. We'll first start with Norfolk, where Liza Shaddy, the sophomore guard, she is a do-it-all player for this Norfolk team. You, know, you, you think about a state championship game, an underclassman, RJ, and like they're going to be kind of in awe of the moment. That's not going to be the case for Norfolk. They were here a year ago. She knows what it takes to win at this stage. And the sophomore, and it's crazy how many times we're going to say that. Said it yesterday, we'll say it today and tomorrow. How many underclassmen are leading their team, especially on the girls' side? Shaddy is a key player to watch. If her game's on today, Mammoth Spring could be in trouble. Mammoth Spring, Sarah Crow, the forward junior, she is their do-it-all player. She's coming off the bench, actually, in this one. Doesn't start the ball game, but she really fills it up for them. You know, I love coaches that sometimes they take that player that you like. You want to keep an eye on and bring him off the bench. Last year we saw the Razorbacks did it with J.D. Note. Sometimes you need a spark. You know, let the game settle in first two, three minutes, and all of a sudden you bring a new wave, a new fresh look into it. I mean, sometimes that can jumpstart your team. Mammoth Spring starting lineup: Laney Young, Bryn Washam. Uh, you've got Davis, Chevelle Graves, and Megan Upton. As for Norfolk, Kelly Blanchard, Madison Hall, Liza Shaddy, Casey Moody, and Kylie Allman. Jumping center for Norfolk is going to be Keely Blanchard. She's going up against Davis, Tay Davis. As the tip is up, it's controlled by Norfolk as we start this 1A Girls State Championship game. The Bears open up in his own. Kind of a high zone, maybe a 3-2 type look. See how Norfolk can handle it. With the basketball, it's going to be Kylie Allman. They'll work it around the perimeter, back into the hands of Blanchard. Blanchard trying to work the ball down low, inside out. They're going to go with the three-point attempt. It's nothing but net as knocking it down that time for Norfolk. That's to Estes. Yeah, she, Estes, Estes. Estes checked in the ball game and got the first buckets of the ball game. Now here's a three-point attempt of their own for Mammoth Spring. It's nothing but air. As coming down with it was Blanchard. Now Washington had a little too much juice on that one. Got to settle down if you're Mammoth Spring. Good start for Norfolk. Help, help, help. A whistle and a foul, Bobby. And we're going to call that foul on Norfolk. Liza Shaddy, and she was the one that was trying to get the ball, but and there was a diving player kind of. I would have thought the, the foul would have gone the other way. They're going to say the Shaddy kind of shielded her off with the body, prevented the, the Mammoth Spring player from getting to it, and called a personal. 3 nothing here in the early going of the 1A Girls State Championship game. Nice cut that time. And going up with the bucket was Bryn Washam. Nice backdoor cut there and a perfect pass between arms and defenders in the lane, and the Lady Bears are on the board. One-point game, Norfolk with the basketball. Top of the key, into the hands of Estes. In the corner to Shaddy, and trying to get to the baseline. Good, doing a good job being Mammoth Springs of that defense, not really allowing them to attack the paint. Yeah, they're, they're packing that zone in. They're a really nice job of rotating over there by Chevelle Graves to deflect that pass. No easy shot so far for Norfolk, even though they've got a 3-2 lead. Estes on the left wing. She'll drive the paint, go up with the right hand, up and over the glass. And, Coming down with the rebound for Mammoth Spring was Davis. Lady Bears with 550 go with the cross court. Down to the high block, puts up the shot, just was ripped out of there. Now here's a three point attempt. And it's in and out. Rebound's going to be taken in by Norfolk. That's the shot that Norfolk wants Mammoth Springs to settle for. Defensively, you see Kyle, uh, Keely Blanchard kind of sagging off of the player there for Mammoth Springs and kind of daring her to take that shot. Estes with the basketball being dogged right now at the midcourt stripe. Blanchard with it. Down to the corner. Here's three. Nothing but buckets. That time for Norfolk, it was Kylie Allman who had 14 points in last year's state finals game. A big shot there for Allman. And Norfolk's got the long game going and a defensive pressure forces the turnover right at the half court line. The Lady Panthers are feeling good about it early. Six to two is our scores. We're reaching the five minute mark here in the first quarter. 
Blanchard with it. Puts it to the wing this time. The free throw line extended. Ball got knocked away. Picked up by the Lady Bears. They can't dribble through his own RJ. That time to turn it over. Nice drive. Partially deflected and it's taken in by Norfolk. We've got a whistle and a blocking foul as this time coming up with a foul for Mammoth Spring. They're going to give it to Chevelle Graves. Not a bad foul there by Graves. You turn it over and a little hip check there prevents the fast break opportunity. Make Norfolk work in the half court. Blanchard gets the ball top of the key out to Shaddy. Now working it down low. Try to get it back to Blanchard. She just had too many bodies right there in front of her. She tried to cut. Yeah, trying to force the alley oop there. Ill advised pass, and they turn it over. With the basketball for the Lady Bears. Here's Graves. Working it down low. Nice defense, but they put the shot up, and she'll head to the free throw line to shoot two. And nice job to get inside position there by Megan Upton, the 5'10 senior. The tallest, one of the tallest players listed on the roster. Established position. And here's a trip to the foul line. So Megan Upton's the one at the foul line for Mammoth Spring. And the first one's up and good. Makes the three-point game with 4.02 to play here in the first quarter. Second's good. We've got a two-point ball game. Blanchard with the basketball. Take it three throw line extended, just threw it away. Here come the Lady Bears, two on one break. Gets it off the glass, we've got a tie ball game. That's really nicely done there by Taylor Davis. Leads the fast break, the two on one opportunity to force the defense to make their decision. Dish it off for the easy lay in. In your face defense is what the Lady Bears have been known for this year. Nice cut at the basket. And it's not able to go as it'll go out of bounds and it'll stay with Norfolk. Yeah, those are the shots you've got to hit. Great ball moving inside as we hit the media timeout. But if you're Norfolk, you're feeling like you left some points on the board there. We got a good one so far in the 1A Girls State Championship game. Six to six is our scores. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, We've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first, by empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charities, education, and exceptional service, because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. There's well over 2,000 Arkansas rice farms. 96% of them are family owned and operated. It's all about building community. The results we've been seeing have been very promising. I grew up watching the farm, knowing every detail about it. If you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. It helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's going to be there for future generations. Every community has a story to tell. If somebody will tell it, it'll be interesting. It's been a big special thank you to Schlotsky's of Hot Springs, located at 3251 Central Avenue. Big thanks for providing food for our crew. I had one of their pickles a minute ago. Quite awesome. There's nothing better than a good pickle on a sandwich. Here's the inbound pass. Good player in the lineup for Norfolk that just checked in was Casey Moody. Our first look at Sarah Crow on the other side as well. Work the ball in the low baseline and still get it back out to Esther. She'll drive the lane with the right hand. It's good. Of course, the defense converge on that baseline and get it to the high post. Easy drive for Estes. She finishes at the 10. Here's some pressure in the backcourt. She'll work the ball back right side into the hands of Taylor Davis. Pressure down low, but making the bucket go was Brent Washam. And these offenses, RJ, are starting to settle in, get more things going towards the basket. We've seen easy layups on both sides the last two possessions. Off pass in the 
Low baseline. Here's Estes cutting the lane. She can't get it to go, though. It's coming down with the rebound for Mammoth Spring was Lady Young. I like Norfolk's game plan. Get the ball to the short corner, look at high post, and create a driving opportunity for Estes. That time she missed it. That's going to be successful more times than not. Well, we've got to travel, and Norfolk's going to get the basketball back. Yeah, Crow had a position, tried to go power step, but nice job by Norfolk to get in there and get a hand on the basketball, force the turnover. That is the second turnover so far for Mammoth Spring. Clean up to this point. Two fouls aside. Bounce pass goes left side to Estes. Now to the left corner. Well, the defense of Mammoth Spring has been really good as Blanchard's going to try to drive and ball was stripped away. Taken by the Lady Bears. It's going to have a hard time. Norfolk is of try to drive on the dribble against this zone. Here's a nice spin move in the lane. That time it was Sarah Crow. Yeah, you mentioned her in the pregame. She comes in off the bench about halfway through the quarter and instant offense on the inside. Work the ball outside in. Blanchard goes to the left corner. Now here's the three point attempt. Buckets! That time for. Norfolk, it was Kylie Ullman. Yeah, they're going to have to find a way to get a hand in the 5'8 junior's face. She's buried two from the corner. This one a foul on Norfolk, and that was Ullman again. For Ullman, that is her first personal foul. Over the Lady Bears with the basketball. Back over to Graves, who's got the ball top of the key out to Crow. That's Tay Davis, now top of the key to Washam. For three air ball, and it's gonna go out of bounds and go with Norfolk. Well outside of her range, and now we'll see if Norfolk wants to be aggressive. They're gonna settle for one shot as we're under 30 seconds here in the first. Cross court pass, top of the key to Blanchard. She's going to hold for one shot. Down to 15. And we've got a whistle and a foul. A foul that time for Mammoth Spring is going to be on Chevelle Graves. Go out of bounds, it'll be Mammoth Spring Ball. A little too much on that one. As Almond couldn't handle it in the corner. And there's a final shot at the buzzer, and that's going to do it for the first quarter of play. Norfolk. They hold a one-point lead over Mammoth Spring as we head to the second quarter, and you're watching it all on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. is now a session.
Did you know you can see the live game stats even before we do? All you got to do, download the Arkansas PBS Engage app, get all the numbers live during the game. Okay, so I'm going to, I've got the app, so I'm going to actually, since they can see it before we do, uh, I'm going to get on there so I can give accurate stats pretty quick. Yeah. Cool. Back to action here at Banco ZK Arena, where the Lady Bears walk the ball into the front court. One down the low to Sarah Crow. She works it inside out. Drives the lane. Nice job that time by Mammoth Spring, Adriana Corbett. Nice job by Corbett. The sophomore gets in the lane, finishes strong. All of a sudden, Mammoth Springs has got a lead. Look at those field goal percentage. With these teams really shooting at a high percentage. 57% for Norfolk, 56 for Mammoth Spring. And they're getting a lot of good looks. They're being methodical, as you might expect in a 12 to 11 contest. They're working it around and making sure they get the best shot possible. Here's Estes for three, and then she rings it home. That's a prime example of it right there, RJ. Just the extra pass, you drive into the zone, force the defense to collapse on you, kick it out for a wide open three, and Estes buries it. Looking quickly go the Lady Bears. They try to get in the lane, just quickly swing it around the perimeter. Now here's another three attempt. It's off the front of the iron, no good. Estes pulls it in, and Norfolk's got the basketball. Norfolk going to slow it down just a little bit. A 14-12 lead. Norfolk hasn't really gone to the bench a whole lot, so they don't want to get into a track meet. Blanchard with the ball. Right side. Trying to go to that baseline to, to get to any type of penetration. It's just not working right now. Rounds pass. Deflected. Taken by Blanchard. Back to the corner. We've got a whistle and a foul. Blanchard was trying to get the pass to the corner, and a mammoth spring player reached out and grabbed her by the head. That's uh, that what you call frowned upon. Pro picks up two fouls. That's big. In one second. Yeah, that's real big. Now checking in for Mammoth Spring is going to be Megan Upton. Now we'll have to see how long Coach Scott Small wants to, to keep Crow on the bench. If they trust her playing with two fouls here in the second quarter. Here's a three-point attempt from the corner. They go left wing, they go left corner, then right corner, and they're hitting from everywhere. Yeah, Allman is on fire from the corners. She's already hit two threes from that left corner. Now she comes to the other side and makes it a perfect three from three from distance. There's a travel call. And that time, Taylor Davis says she never moved her foot, but she did slide it just a touch. Yep. Coach Small going to try to... Stop the bleeding a little bit as it's a 6-0 run. Mammoth Spring hasn't scored in more than two minutes. They've opened up a 17-12 lead. 5.51 to play here in the second quarter. And I, I think, though, if you're Norfolk, you're doing a great job of, of really just putting a lot of pressure on this Mammoth Spring team. But, you know, the defense that Mammoth Spring has been playing down low, you would think that that would stop that. They just not, they've not protected the outside right now. Yeah, well, the, the defense is all about collapsing, not allowing you to beat, beat them on the inside as they're collapsing that zone. But right now, Norfolk shooting 67%. They're 5 of 5 from the three-point line. And anytime a team's shooting those kind of numbers, they're going to be hard to beat. And right now, Norfolk, everything they throw up turns up the aces. Eventually, those shots at least you believe, aren't going to go down. But right now, Lady Panthers enjoying a five-point advantage. So here's Blanchard with the basketball, and she'll go left wing. Puts it in the hands of Allman. Trying to drive down low. That time it's Moody. She goes up, got her own rebound. Now another offensive rebound. Moody to Blanchard, top the key. Back right side to Estes. She'll drive baseline. Stick it up from seven feet and over the rim. And now here comes Bland, Mammoth Spring. We're going to whistle a foul. There we are. It's complimentary talking about how hot they're shooting. And they go 0 for 3 on that trip. And all of a sudden, they're back to 50% from the field. Mammoth Spring right now on a 2 minute, 33 second scoring drought. 
Checking the ball game for Norfolk is going to be Kylie Maine. She's going to come in for Eliza Shaddy. Down pass gets knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Mammoth Spring. 50% shooting for both these teams so far, but the big, really the big stat overall, Norfolk is five of five on the three-point line. Inbound pass. Taken this time by Davis. And they're able to knock it down. Down by Upton to establish position on the block. Turn around, uses the window. Gets to a one possession game. Langford with the basketball in the front court. The ball is Allman. And just gonna, they, they really have gotten in no big hurry whatsoever, Bobby. As Estes got it, no drive baseline, overshoots everything. And, and the spring comes down with the rebound. Hammond really extended the zone there to try to turn up the pressure, force the awkward shot. Got to stop. Work, 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 go. Spin move in the lane with the left hand. It doesn't go, but she's fouled. And that will put Bryn Washam at the free throw line for the Lady Bears. Good job by Washam. Gets the defender going right. Spin move back across the lane. Couldn't finish. Had a chance to earn a couple free throws. That time for Norfolk, it was Casey Moody who committed the foul. As you see right there, the first free throw is no good. Before the game, Emma Spring and Norfolk is not being able to establish any distance between themselves just yet. Now here's Blanchard with a nice driving on the baseline, was able to put it up and in. Blanchard hasn't really been aggressive offensively as of yet. Nice to see her attack the lane, get her first points. And there's a nice bucket by Mammoth Spring. We've got a two-point game with 4.04 to play here in the first half. Mammoth Spring has beat the pressure there easily and wash them with a nice lay-in. And Lady Bears shooting 58% for the contest. Behind the back pass to clear that one out. Now Estes on the left wing. Trying to find somebody, we've got a whistle and a travel. And that'll take us to immediate timeout. We've got a two-point game between Norfolk and Mammoth Spring, and you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. summer for Blueberry's Clubhouse. We'll see a whole new crop of friends for the very best adventures in Arkansas. That's phenomenal! Good work, friends! We did it! Blueberry's Clubhouse returns this summer, only on Arkansas PBS. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why, at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. We on that next level. We on that next level. Coming up at the half, the Arkansas PBS team is going to show you the Ozark artistry at its finest. Amazing scenery from above Arkansas and inspiring stories from Arkansas's largest industry, agriculture. Stay with us for the Arkansas PBS halftime show, sponsored by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. 3.43 to play left here in the second quarter. Norfolk leads Mammoth Spring by a score of 19 to 17 as Mammoth Spring will have the basketball. Bringing it up is Upton. He's on the right wing. Now top of the key, they go out to Graves. Gonna work it down high, low. Nice move by Upton in the lane, but misses the shot. Coming down with the rebound for Norfolk was Maines that time. Estes with the basketball. 
on the right wing. And the ball stolen away. Taken by Mammoth Spring, now brought up by Davis. Turnover starting to be a little bit of an issue for the Lady Panthers. They've given it away seven times. Davis puts up a shot in the lane. It bounces off the back of the iron. Now we've got a jump ball and possession arrow. Goes with Norfolk with 2.55 to play in the second quarter. Well, seven turnovers have led to just six points for Mammoth. They haven't been able to take advantage of the free opportunities just yet, but that's something that Norfolk and Coach William Stewart's going to want to clean up. Here is Norfolk in the front court as Estes has it on the wing. Lost the handle on it. Tried to get it down low to Blanchard and just thrown away. Now, one thing about the Lady Bears, they do a really good job sticking their hands in, kind of deflecting the ball away without causing fouls. Yeah, that's the, that's the advantage of that zone. You, know, you use your length, you close down the passing lanes, create some extra opportunities for yourself. In the lane goes Bryn Washam, and she'll head to the free throw line to shoot two. And the foul that time is on Casey Moody for Norfolk. That's her second personal foul. One thing to pay attention to maybe, RJ, is Keely Blanchard, the 5'10 sophomore for Norfolk, appears to have jammed a finger or a thumb. She keeps tugging at that right hand of hers. Duggan's good. We've got a tie ball game. Now it's been two minutes since Norfolk scored. They've turned it over three times in that same span. Norfolk with the basketball as they work it left side to Moody. Moody goes to the corner to Estes. She's trapped there in the corner. We've got a whistle and an offensive foul. Estes extended her arm out to try to clear some space, and they caught her with the foul. Great job defensively to set up the trap in the corner. And the Mammoth Spring bench and the crowd right behind them helped make that call as they thought that she got away with one of them, but not the second time. And now that's four turnovers in the last two minutes and 15 seconds against the Lady Panthers. Liza Shaddy checks in the ball game for Norfolk. Under two minutes to play here in the first half. Lady Bears working it around. We're back top of the key, over to Corbett. Corbett at the free throw line with the left hand. No good, we've got a whistle and a foul, and that foul's gonna be against Megan Upton. Not shooting just yet. Next one's gonna put both teams in the bonus. Here comes Blanchard. He's right side with it. Into the hands of Maines. Maines trying to get it down that corner to work it inside. They finally do, and now a foul's coming. That's what, that's what really Norfolk's been trying to do all day is work it to that baseline to, to really get the penetration. It's not really been successful up to this point. This time it was. Well, they, quicker ball movement is what they're looking for. You can see Coach William Stewart screaming get the ball to the short corner but once you get it there that's what they're trying to trap is man of spring once you get it to that short corner quickly get it to the high post quickly reverse side and that's what happened there got him a chance to get to the foul line this is both free throws and mammoth spring comes down with a rebound is calling it in that time was washam orbit Top the key to Washam. She'll drive. Goes up with a left hand. It was partially blocked. Upton was there to get the put back, and she's fouled. So Megan Upton is at the free throw line, the senior. So far today, she's got four points. It's two on Blanchard now. Foul trouble hasn't been much of an issue yet for either side. Uh, misses that one. We've still got a tie ball game at 19. That one's good. Mammoth Spring takes a one-point lead. So Blanchard brings the ball in the front quarters. We're under a minute to play here in the first half. Oh, yeah. With 
they're not being a shot clock in 1A championships. I was just thinking the same yeah, thing. Yeah. They're going to bleed. They're going to try to bleed this all the way down, aren't this they? The entire minute that they've had the ball, they're just going to bleed it down, and I think the Lady Bears know it. So nobody's really going to do anything. They're just going to stand there and wait on it. Yeah. Shot clock currently in Arkansas, only at the largest classification. So It'll change next year. Yeah, they can sit here and just bleed this entire final minute away and try to. Take the lead and headed to the locker room. Down to 13 seconds. Down to 10. Blanchard in the lane. Kicks it out right. Lost the handle on it. He got a tie up. And they're going to say jump ball. The possession arrow goes with Mammoth Spring with three seconds. See, and that's the bad thing, Bobby, is you hold to that last shot. You wait till about 10 seconds left. And it doesn't really give you much time to set anything up. So Coach Stewart was over there giving instructions. You can call the best play in the world, but it's all about execution. Again, they try to drive through the zone. And too many defenders, too many arms in there, and deflect it loose and cause the tie possession. Three seconds at the halfway mark, and that's going to do it. We head to halftime where Mammoth Spring has a one point lead on Norfolk in the 1A Girls State Championship. And you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The day before they put her on the life support, when I get out and get well, as soon as they let me, I'm going to get vaccinated. That was my last conversation, but it was too late. It is a tragedy that came and took us so quick. This family is devastated. Please get vaccinated. It's devastating. It's devastating. It's natural to be concerned with our kids' safety, but when they're riding the school bus, we shouldn't have to be. Illegally passing a school bus puts our children's lives at risk. That's why Everett is joining area schools to promote the Flashing Red Kids Ahead Safety Program. School bus safety is everyone's responsibility. Do your part. Always stop when you see the flashing red lights of a school bus. Children's lives depend on it. Remember, flashing red, kids ahead. Back here at halftime at Bank OZK Arena, Mammoth Spring leads it 20 to 19 over Norfolk. And Bobby, defense has really started to crank up on both sides towards the end of the half. It really did. And both of these teams really started to turn the basketball over too. Got a little, try, they tried to pick the pace up a little more, but that just led into more turnovers in the last four minutes of that first half. Neither team hit a field goal, neither team able to score outside of free throws. And so that's going to be something we got to pay attention to. What kind of adjustments can these two coaches make at the half? Because what we saw in that last four minutes, not going to get the job done. Yeah, no, it's not. And I would imagine, you know, I, if you're Norfolk, you've got to be feeling really good about where you're at uh, in this game. Being that you've already lost this Mammoth Spring team once, they played really well. Both teams shooting nearly 50% in this one. Yeah, the way they're shooting it is off the charts. Yeah. The problem is they're not getting enough shots up because of the turnovers. If you're Norfolk, you got to stop trying to attack the zone off the dribble. Yeah. You can't dribble into three defenders. You're going to turn it over. On the other end, I like what Mammoth Spring's trying to do, get the ball into the lane, get easy shots, but Norfolk's doing a nice job keeping them out. We're at the half where right now Mammoth Spring, they lead this one 20 to 19. Stick around for our halftime show. Get to go around exploring Arkansas. Coming up next as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Hey everyone, welcome inside our studios here for the Arkansas PBS Halftime Show, sponsored by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. I'm Ed Leon. And I'm Julie Thomas. And for the next few minutes, we're gonna show you just some of the amazing programming we've produced to shine a light on the natural state. In addition to our high school sports programming, which now includes not only basketball and football, but baseball and softball as well, we make it our mission to tell Arkansas stories. Those unique stories no one else is telling. Like our Emmy Award winning documentary about a truly unique blacksmithing operation in the hills of Mountain View, Here's a look at the Ozark artistry of Urban Forge. Well, 
blacksmithing, you've got to know how to do it from start to finish. It took me a lot to learn what I learned, what I know, and I still learn. <laughs> you know, I get things that come along that like, golly, how am I going to do that? Obviously not the easiest line of work in the world. Patience is definitely a virtue in blacksmithing. <laughs> artisan blacksmiths and coppersmiths and wood carvers and Finnish artisans who all interpret wonderful designs that we create for people all across the country. It's just got its own unique pattern. And no matter how hard you try, you can't get two pieces to look alike because it is all hand done. The only one I'm really interested in passing everything on to that that I know is my son. Like, where there's been techniques lost over the years, there's been knowledge lost, and we may never get that back. We gotta teach the new guy, or this ain't gonna be around much longer. People out there that would be great at it, and I don't think many people know, you know, that this exists. But it's still, you know, in its own right, a beautiful form of art. Pieces of artwork that people will want to hand down to their children. We want to design something that can be a vessel for memories forever. You know, Ed, the characters we met in that film, they're something else. They are. I got a chance to spend a lot of time with those guys, and they're the real deal. Their artistry is beautifully captured here in this show, in the cinematography, the story of their art form. It's a beautiful program, and it's always available. Urban Forge, just like all our content, is just a few clicks away on demand. You can find our programs wherever you like to watch, on the PBS video app, on our website, or on our YouTube channel. YouTube TV subscribers can find us there too, and of course, the way you're watching us right now. Yeah, it is so awesome. There are so many platforms, so many Arkansas stories. You know, our own Chuck Dovish has been exploring Arkansas for decades, but this past year, he gave us an all new perspective of the natural state one from the skies. Take a look at the gorgeous Exploring Arkansas from above. Arkansas, the natural state, does indeed have many natural wonders, beauty that can especially be appreciated from a bird's eye view. This is our exploration of a unique state with an aerial cinematic perspective covering all four seasons. Arkansas, you've got the delta, the mountains, rivers, from above, add so much to it. So many people are surprised at what we have here. It's just as beautiful as any other state. Welcome to Exploring Arkansas from Above. I love this so much, and you've never seen Arkansas like this. It's one of the most beautiful shows we've ever done, and the most unique view of our great state. Right, Julie. You know, we're Arkansas's public media. We get to dig a little deeper, tell a little bit more of the story. That's the nature of public broadcasting, and we're honored to do it, especially with a program like that one. Indeed we are, but you know, we're in a partnership. We're in a partnership with you, our viewer. We can't do this without your help. We'd love for you to be part of our family. Sign up to get exclusive sneak peeks and information sent right to your inbox. Yes, add your voice to the conversation. Let's go over to Marge Bentley with the Arkansas PBS Foundation. She's gonna tell you how to do just that. All right, thanks Ed. I know we are short on time, so real quick, all we're asking is that you take a moment and go to our website, myarpbs.org slash sign up. Give us your email address and join the conversation. And if you love what you're watching, text SPORTS to 501-491-0444 and donate $10 to help us bring you many, many more Arkansas stories. Now, Ed and Julie, I know our time is almost up, but maybe we can show one more clip. One more for you, Marge. Arkansas is one of the most productive and diverse agricultural states in the nation. And with that in mind, last spring we partnered with Arkansas Farm Bureau to explore rural community life, agribusiness, and much more. Here is a taste of Good Roots. There's well over 2,000 Arkansas rice farms. 96% of them are family owned and operated. It's all about building community. The results we've been seeing have been very promising. I grew up 
watching the farm, knowing every detail about it. If you take care of the soil, the soil will take care of you. It helps us to give back to the land and make sure that it's going to be there for future generations. Every community has a story to tell, and if somebody will tell it, it'll be interesting. Look for Good Roots the second Friday of each month during Arkansas Week and On Demand. Hey, it's about that time. Thanks for joining us for halftime. Let's get you back to Bank OZK Arena for more championship action on your home for the Arkansas Basketball State Finals, Arkansas PBS. Enjoy the second half. The Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops, powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Back here at Bank OZK Arena in Hot Springs as it's the 1A Girls State Championship game between Mammoth Spring and Norfolk. RJ Hawk along with Bobby Swafford as we get you set for second half action. Let's take a look at some second half stats. You think about these two teams, RJ, and just the way they finished the first half. There's a lot to be desired either way, but they're both shooting 50, near 50%. They haven't really turned the ball over a ton. Rebounding are pretty even, but late in that half, Norfolk started the turnovers. The Mammoth Spring started to miss some easy shots in the lane, started to miss some free throws. It's the little things. In this game, we, as we expected, as they played just 10 days ago and was designed about four points, I think one second half run is going to be the difference in this no. contest. No, I think you're exactly right. We're going to see the uh, the continuation of that defense that we saw at the end of the first half continue over here in the second half. Is it the one point game? 20 to 19. Mammoth Spring has the basketball or it uh, has the lead. Norfolk will have the basketball to start the second half and they will move from right to left here at Bank OZK Arena. Norfolk with the ball as they're going to work it around the perimeter. And the spring already extending that defense like they did the second half of that second quarter. Force those turnovers from Norfolk, try to make them more uncomfortable handling the basketball. So with the ball for Norfolk is Allman. We'll go back left side into the hands of Shaddy. Daddy works it down low to Blanchard at the free throw line. Now kicks it back right side to Estes. Back over to Blanchard. Now we've got a whistle and a foul. You can see how methodical Norfolk's going to be just working it around. They've already bled 49 seconds of this third quarter off the clock, not even attempting to take a shot. They're going to work it around until they get exactly what they want to. Now checking in is going to be Adriana Corbett. For Mammoth Spring checking out will be Laney Young. Norfolk averages 55 points a game, so they're not always this methodical. A nice inbounds play there to get a scoring opportunity. Kind of what Mammoth Springs doing, is forcing them to, to be a little more patient than normal. Flies to Shaddy, he's going to head to the free throw line as the foul that time was committed by Megan Upton. And for Upton, that's her third personal foul. That's in and out, no good. Now checking in for Blanchard Spring. It's going to be Sarah Crow. She'll come in for Upton. Norfolk 0 for 3 from the foul line. Trying to find a way to get one of those to fall. And the second one is good. We'll get a tie ball game once again. 35, 35, 35. Comes Blanchard Spring. Or excuse me. Mammoth Spring as the ball is going to go out of bounds. Graves had it deflected away, and it was last touched by Norfolk. You're going to see both of these squads are to turn up the defensive intensity because they've shown the knack. They don't, they don't look real comfortable with, with pressure right in their face. Down pass this time over to Davis. Now right side, they go to Corbett. Working it, now driving the lane is Washam. She puts it up, it rolls off the back of the iron. It's no good, and rebounds pulled in by Norfolk. Healy Blanchard works the ball around as they get over to Estes. Up, up, up. 
Yeah, another Addy top to keep for three, and it's no good. No, you, to your point, Bobby, just slow, not in any big hurry whatsoever. Being very, very patient. Now here's Sarah Crow drives in and is fouled, and she'll head to the free throw line to shoot two. Nice job there by Mammoth Spring to go on the attack early to complete opposite of what we've seen on the other end of the floor. Quickly go to work and she gets to the foul line. Good as Tylee Maines is going to check in for Norfolk. Shot good. Crow's got four points now. Mammoth Spring got a two point lead. And they're going to throw it. They were trying to get in the hands of Kylie Maness and just overthrows her. You can see Coach Stewart when that one ball landed around his, his feet, and he's going to take a timeout. And he just asked the question why. He's like, just trying to do too much. You don't have to go out of your way to, to make the special pass, make the simple pass. That's all he wants to, to get across to his team. Work it around, be simple. Get the easy shots. Folk go down. 5.57 to play here in the third quarter as Mammoth Spring has a two point lead, 22 to 20. Both coaches trying to, to really talk their teams up, but once again, there's no urgency on, on either part, really. It's just slow, methodical. Let's find that good shot. And it's, it's not just on one side, it's on both sides. It, it, you know, the games have different, you know, flows, if yeah. you will. I mean, it was 60 to 56 the last time these two teams played. So, so they're not afraid to go up and down with each other. It's just today, at least the, the, the strategy is to be patient. Every possession is huge as Norfolk's going full court pressure here. Well, the Bears get the ball in the front court. Crow loses the handle on it, but it's picked right back up by Amanda Springs. Bryn, she had Bryn Washam, and she's able to put it in. Nice job by Washam to go up strong right through the defender. And Amanda Spring, and this may be the first time we've seen either team since early first quarter lead by more than one possession. Washam's now the leading point getter for Amanda Spring with 11 points. Nice drive to the lane, count the bucket. And going to the free throw line to shoot the one extra point shot, Kylie Manis. Almond's been really impressive. She's knocked down three threes. She gets the three point play there, 12 points for Almond. She's doing it all, keeping Norfolk right in this contest. I said Manus, I meant Allman, as she was able to get in there. Now here comes the Lady Bears. Nice work. The pace of the game starting to speed up a little bit, Bobby. It's a great job to go outside, get the, the cutting crow to the block, and she's able to finish. She's got four quick points in the second half. Under five to play here in the third. Manus gives the ball off at the jump circle. Now here's Allman in the lane with the right hand. Goes too hard. The Lady Bears come down with it. Allman's been a lot more aggressive offensively. Didn't get the shot to go down there, but I like the aggressiveness. Attack this defense. Up to the left side. Trying to set up the offense to get somebody to move around, that being Adriana Corbett. Back down to Crow. Crow just throws it back to try to clear it out. Oh, oh. Luckily right there to save it was Corbett. And lost her footing. Lucky her teammate was there. You start to see, though, when Crow gets the ball on the block, they're immediately double-teaming her, making her give up the basketball. Back to the... By wing, under four to play now. Now in the lane, works it right side to Crow. Nice cut that time, and it was Adriana Corbett with the cut in the bucket. Yeah, great job by Crow to recognize Corbett cutting to the basket. Good strong finish. Leads the largest of the game at five for Mammoth Spring. Oh, 
Okafor takes the ball to the right wing. Now we've got a whistle and a foul. This foul is going to go against Bryn Washam, and that'll take us to a media timeout with 3.21 to play here in the third quarter. I said it's going to take us. There we go. They, they, they were wondering. Nobody raised their arm, but we knew it. As Norfolk trails 28-23, and you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Broadcast of this championship game is made possible by the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Over 2,500 team members across 17 local electric distribution co-ops powering homes, farms, and industries somewhere across Arkansas. We are the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas. Power and people. Farmers and Merchants Bank and the Bank of Fayetteville share the mission of Arkansas PBS to enrich and empower all Arkansans. Community, dignity, respect. That's what me banking is all about. More at mebanking.com. If you want a copy of this game or any of the other state championship games this weekend, just go to mmproductions.net. Order one for your mom, your dad, and you can even order one for RJ. He likes to listen to himself. Yes. yes. I don't even know what to I'm, say. I'm making fun of you. They're making fun of you in our ear. I, I, I have no I, I mean. 28-23, I know that much. As Norport. Has the basketball over on the right wing. I think Blanchard needs to get more involved offensively as Norfolk turns it over. Now here come the Lady Bears with the left hand. He misses it, but she's fouled. That time going up with a shot was Taylor Davis. <laughs> Foul was on Keeley Blanchard. For the block, missing this so that she got her with the body. Alabama Spring can, can push this open to a three possession lead if Davis can knock home the second. She's taking it out right there. Blanchard who leans it up. I think she's got to be more involved, RJ. Get her involved. You, you watch her shooting and warm up, they rarely miss. Two in black, and we go to her. Now here is Norfolk over to Blanchard at the free throw line. She'll pull up and banks it off the glass. It's good. Asking he shall receive, I guess. Yeah. Brings it within five with 2.36 to play here in the third. Pressures a little bit more. Now Norfolk gets a steal. Gets it off to Blanchard. Good job by Allman to get her hands in there and take the basketball away. Richard takes to the wing. It's it off to Estes. It's to the left side. Here's a three-point attempt. It's too hard, and the rebound's going to be pulled in by the Lady Bears. And that time coming up with it was Corbett. First time Almond's missed from beyond the arc. She hit her first three today. A minute 58 to play. As Corbett's got it top of the key. Look at the Crow. She'll go up with the right hand and rolls it in. Good strong finish there by Crow, but she knew that Blanchard was playing with three fouls. She didn't want to be too aggressive defensively. Good smart heads up basketball move there. Gets the easy lay in. Norfolk with the basketball. Hey, 108 to play as there's a kick ball out of bounds. It's a big final 66 seconds of the third as Norfolk needs to try to trim this lead just a touch going to the fourth. Because you really do feel like Mammoth has got all the momentum. Now here's the three-point attempt by Allman and she hits the bottom of the bucket. Four or five from distance, all from the corner. 
She Almond. likes that corner, doesn't she? She does, and she is deadly from it. Here come the Lady Bears. Working right side to Upton. Now in the lane to Crow, and she's fouled. Now that time, Norfolk's going to be called on Tyler Manus. I say uh, Manus is actually Casey Moody. As the first free throws in and out. Moody's going to have to head to the bench. She's got four personal fouls. It's going to give us our first look at the six foot junior, Jordan Rasmussen. And that one's no good. Rebounds pulled in by Norfolk and given off to Blanchard. We're under a minute to play here in the third quarter. Let's see if Norfolk again wants to bleed down the final 45 seconds of the period. Holding for the final possession. Didn't work out for him in the second. They're clearly going to do it again here in the third. Down to 25 seconds to play here in the third. Looks like they are going to bleed it off, Bobby. 15. And a 10. Here's Estes. Six seconds. Estes, left side, down to four. Cross court to Alden for three. She knocks it down for the win. I tell you what, Alden is deadly right now from the three point line, and we are a one point game. Headed to the fourth quarter. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. Centennial Bank is committed to you. Since our founding in 1999, we've become one of the nation's most trusted banks by remembering that you come first. By empowering our communities to reach their highest potential through our dedication to local charity, education, and exceptional service because we are proud to call Arkansas home. Banking with you in mind, Centennial Bank, member FDIC. Thanks, George. Appreciate it. At Big Red Stores, we're always proud to sponsor, support, and partner up with many events and activities throughout the community. Among them, high school championships throughout the state of Arkansas. At Big Red Stores, our team members are always ready to assist you to make your visit with us a pleasant one. And at Big Red Stores, we recognize that none of our support or ability to serve the community is possible without you. That's why at Big Red Stores, you're always the MVP of the Big Red team. Big Red Stores, now more convenient than ever. Stay tuned, coming up after the game is Steve Sullivan hosts the Arkansas PBS post game show. You can meet a young sports in Alver, paving her own way. Take a historical look at Hazel Walker, Arkansas Travelers. And see some Arkansas PBS All-Stars in Class 1 and 2A. That's all coming up right after this one. Well, we start the fourth quarter of play, and looky right there, Kylie Main Manus. She's been a player here in the second half. But Allman has been the real killer so far. Five of six from three, 18 points. She's the reason Norfolk's only down a point. The Lady Bears have the basketball as Davis works the ball around the corner over to Washam for three. It's too hard, but right there to get a rebound was Upton, and the ball lands in Blanchard's hands for Norfolk. I think Upton was surprised there was nobody in her face, and she just kind of short-armed it. 7-25 and counting. As Blanchard gets tied up, trying to find somebody, we've got a whistle. And a timeout, it'll be a 30-second timeout charge to Norfolk. Probably a good timeout right there to possibly avoid any type of turnover or anything like that. Yeah, I recognize this team is trapped. Every possession is going to be crucial here in the fourth. Speaking of crucial, how about the contest we got coming up right after this one? The 1A boys, county line in the state championship game for the first time since 1971, yeah. taking on the Bradley Bears. And I had a chance to talk with Coach Benny Harris of Bradley uh, earlier this week, and he goes, yeah, we played County Line about six years in the state tournament, six years ago. He goes, they thumped us. Yeah. He goes, we hadn't forgot about that. I expect this is going to be a good one. County Line Bradley coming up next. Do you know where in Arkansas Bradley is located? South. <laughs> yeah, it's down there close to the Louisiana border. Hey. I was, I had a 
chance to be 25% right. <laughs> North, east, and west is also an option. <laughs> Do you know where county line is? I do. I actually yeah. know exactly where county line is. It's between Charleston and Paris. Oh, I was going to say at the county line. As the ball is deflected out of bounds at 7-12 to play here in the ball game. Mammoth Springs up one, to one point, 32-31. Landry with the basketball on the right wing. Left wing, excuse me. Is now your man, Maddie. Spring, you got to find out where 33 and Black is. And make sure you got a hand in her face and she got open there. You got the shot off and Sarah Crow got the rebound for the Lady Bears. That's a good open look though for Allman. You're going to take that every chance you get if you're Norfolk. Crow going to work the left side of the paint, go up. The ball gets stuck. Takes some force to get the ball stuck in the corner. We get the broom out. Yep. Bobby, go jump. I used to be able to do that. Probably can't anymore. Not in the suit, at least. Yeah. A little hip. A little hip. I mean, we have another ball. There it is. So at the free throw line, it should be Sarah Crow. So far today, Crow is two for four at the free throw line, make that three for five. She's got nine points. It's pretty quiet the first half. You know, she picked up those two fouls in the span of a second and had to sit for most of that second quarter. But she's, she's come on in the second half up to nine points. And the second one's good. So that makes it a three-point game with 6.41 to play. Four press is on by Mammoth Spring, broken by Norfolk. Allman getting a lot more attention as they work the ball into the paint. Top of the key goes Moody. Back over to Allman. She thought about it on the wing. Allman going to drive in. She's fouled. And it's before the shot went off. So they'll inbound it from the baseline. Just strong there to drive. Norfolk. They're closing out hard on Allman. He recognizes that. It's a step into the lane. Picks up the foul. Throw back to the bench. Their third foul. Inbound goes left side. Here's Allman for three from the corner. No good. And rebounds run down by Norfolk. Shaddy's got it. She was able to get over to Estes. Estes drives the paint. Goes up with a left hand. It's no good. Ball's going to go out of bounds. And... It was last touched by Norfolk, and Lady Bears get the basketball back. Got it, Got it, take it. Chances in the lane there. Norfolk couldn't take advantage of it. Nice job by Mammoth Spring again to collapse. And make things life difficult for the Lady Panthers. Lady Bears. Ball with 5.45 to play in the ball game. As they go topside to Davis, now over to Washam. Okay, they're content with some work on the little clock here as well. Morris will come out and guard you. Now, going down low was up there, and she traveled with it. Yeah, the Mammoth Spring crowd's not going to like that. She really didn't have clean possession of it. Kind of tipped it to herself, shuffled her feet. The official deemed that she had enough possession and traveled. So Norfolk gets it back because they're down by three. 5 11 and counting. With the basketball is Shaddy. Get it down to Estes. Estes with the right hand. It goes and she's fouled. I thought Mammoth Spring got away with a little shove as the pass came into Estes. She was able to control the pass, uh, gather herself off the window, then the takes the hit. And she's got a chance to tie this contest. Estes has not been to the free throw line today. She's got 10 points. Trying to tie the ball game up with this free throw. And she leaves it short. Rebound pulled in by Crow, and 
Here come the Lady Bears. Defense haven't been pretty for Norfolk. Again, small sample size. With two of six from the foul line. Now they work it right side to Corbett. Back to the top of the key to wash him. She'll drive to Crow. Ball was partially deflected away, but picked back up by Young. And a four and a half left in the ball game. One point game. Right side. Into the hands of Young. Trying to get it away. It's stole away by Norfolk. Here come the Panthers. Working it down court to Estes. Estes gets it back out to the free throw line. They kick it back to the corner. She'll pull up from 14 feet. No good. Rebounds pulled in by the Lady Bears. Mammoth Springs has been a little too patient the last few possessions. They haven't scored nearly two and a half minutes. But they're not being as aggressive as they were in that third quarter to help them build a lead. Number four to play here in the ball game. Upside goes Washburn. Washburn, excuse me. She'll put it up. It rolls in and out. Rebounds pulled in by Norfolk. Allman with the basketball. Stands at that state championship logo. Stoppage in play and some time. Two teams can probably use a break. Working the ball in is Manus. Manus back over to Allman. Allman trying to find somebody. Found Estes. Yes. She goes up with the right hand. It's good. Great job by Allman. She, she's been shooting it so well. The defense draws to her. Leaves Estes wide open. And Norfolk's in the lead as we hit the media. 35-34. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. It's natural to be concerned with our kids' safety, but when they're riding the school bus, we shouldn't have to be. Illegally passing a school bus puts our children's lives at risk. That's why Everett is joining area schools to promote the Flashing Red Kids Ahead Safety Program. School bus safety is everyone's responsibility. Do your part. Always stop when you see the flashing red lights of a school bus. Children's lives depend on it. Remember, flashing red, kids ahead. See the natural state from a bird's eye view and exploring Arkansas from above airs at 4 o'clock today. Watch it by ArkansasPBS.org. We're on TV. 307 to play here in the ball game in the 1A Girls State Championship game. We've had a good one so far. Norfolk. They lead it 35-34. You gotta be aggressive here if you're Mammoth. Try to get something going to the basket. They've gotten a little stagnant offensively. Take advantage of the size that you have. Try to get the ball to crow down low. And see half court pressure by Norfolk. As they're working across the timeline. Gets it over into the hands of Washam. Now we've got a whistle and a foul. With a 15 foul now on Norfolk. The next one's going to put the Lady Panthers on the line. Still got a little work to do before Mammoth Spring earns the trip to the stripe. Here's the inbound to Washington. They work it left side to Young. Back top of the key. Clock rolls at 247 and counting here in the 1A Girls State Championship game. Defense, defense, get to the ball. Get to it. Defense, defense. I do it, Polly. Very, it, very patient. Go to the Lady Bears. Oh, here left side. Davis. Back over to Crow. She goes up. Can't pull it down. North Fork's got the rebound. The exact look you want, the exact shot you want. Great ball movement, just did not convert in the lane. Now here's Estes, right side. They go up with it, it's good. Get the bucket that time for Norfolk. It was Casey Moody. Three-point game. 
you got to go with a little bit of sense of urgency now, I, I would think, with two minutes left, right, Bobby? Four and a half minutes since Mammoth Springs found the bottom of the net. Here's a three-point attempt by Graves. We've got a whistle and a foul, and it's going the other way. Mammoth Spring picked the worst possible time to go on probably one of their longest scoring drafts of the season. 449 was the last time they scored six consecutive points for Lady Panthers. They've got a chance to add to that here at the foul line. Well, Keeley Blanchard comes in for Norfolk and for Mammoth Springs. Megan Upton's back in the ball game. She's really been a cog for them, but she's working with three fouls. They had a chance to well, at the last five minutes. Norfolk's had Blanchard on the bench as well, so she's going to come in with fresh legs. That's it. And that's big because you know Mammoth Spring is going to bring in the full court pressure, and she's been the point guard for the majority of today. 38 34 after that foul shot is good. She hits both. It's a five point game for Norfolk. Largest lead of the ball game for Norfolk at five points. You can see the Lady Panthers extend the defense, trying to create something. Wigley's got a foul. They're going to call a foul on Norfolk's Allman. Kylie Allman picks it up. It's okay for now. Still not in the bonus. And now you've got to back it up just a little bit if you're the Lady Panthers because the next foul will send Mammoth Spring to the line. Graves working it down, intercepted, taken by Norfolk. Blanchard in the lane with the right hand. She's fouled. The bucket counts. What a great steal. Trying to do too much on one end. Blanchard just goes coast to coast and able to get the contact from behind and gets the lay in. A huge lead for Norfolk. And the Lady Bear is going to take a timeout to talk about it. A minute 28 to play in the ball game. Norfolk up 41-34. And you, it goes back to those fresh legs you were talking about, Bobby. Blanchard was able to get that interception and just take it coast to coast. Yeah, and she looked like she'd been on the bench for the last four or five minutes. And that's a really, really strong move for Coach William Stewart. But also you got to give credit to the to the everybody else for Norfolk because they allowed her to be on the bench. Mammoth Spring didn't make a run with their starting point guard on the bench. It pays off to have depth, pays off to have experience in Norfolk. A um, minute and a half away if they can hang on to it from a title. 41-34, neither one of these teams have ever won a state championship. They've been here, but have never punched their ticket to the trophy. And the way that Norfolk has played in the last three and a half minutes, really the last five minutes or so, that's a little shocking because they've risen to the occasion here in the fourth quarter. Mammoth Spring scoreless in the last 5-14. 10-0 run for the Lady Panthers, and that's why they've got a seven-point advantage. A minute 28 at the free throw line is going to be Keeley Blanchard for Norfolk. Trying to make this an eight-point game. Free throw is no good. Rebound pulled in by the Lady Bears. Working quickly. Down court, they overthrow it, and it goes out of bounds instead of Norfolk. Yeah, Mammoth Springs is trying to do a little too much. There might have been a little contact down low with Blanchard, but they don't get the call, but that pass was going to be uncatchable either way, and just trying to do too much as the Lady Bears turn it over again. Allman's going to inbound it. Full court press is on. They get it in to Blanchard. Blanchard. A work around one defender, get it into the front court. They work it left side over to Moody. Yeah, now now down low to Estes. If you're Mammoth Spring, RJ, you got to think about when's the time to foul, and it may be right now as you're down seven with inside 70 seconds. Allman's got it. She's fouled, and so Allman will head to the free throw line with a minute three left here in the fourth quarter. No shot clock. You can't avoid to waste valuable seconds. And now Mammoth Spring smart to give up the foul there. We'll see if the Lady Panthers can ice the game at the stripe. They've struggled from the foul line. Four of nine. You no, know, Bobby, starting the season in Class 1A, Norfolk was 
The Arkansas Democrat is that number one team in the preseason poll. Mammoth Spring was number three. As the year's gone on, Mammoth Spring has not lost to one school inside of the 1A conference. It's been a really remarkable year by both these teams. Yep. And, uh, and you look at the roster for next year as Norfolk pushes the lead up to nine. Uh, and you look at what they're losing, or maybe a better way of what they're not losing, Norfolk's going to be your preseason number one next year, too. Now in the lane goes Mammoth Spring, and they will knock it out, down that time with Washam. And a whistle and a foul as now Allman's going to head back to the free throw line. Good quick bucket there for Mammoth Spring. And now they need a little help on the other end. They need to either force a turnover, or they need the Lady Panthers to miss at the strike. Well, Allman today at the free throw line, three for three. She's got 20 points. She had 14 last year in the state finals. Free throws up and good. Yep, got to show up for the big games, and Allman has been lights out. Five of eight from the three-point line, 21 points in the contest. Make it 22. Working left side with the left hand, misses the shot, and Blanchard comes down with it, and she's fouled. 45 seconds left, chance to put this game away right here, RJ. Get it up to double digits. You're pretty much your chances of coming back are, are slim, very, very slim. She misses it. Blanchard on the day is now 0 for 2 from the free throw line. She misses both. And now coming down with us, the Lady Bears. They work it into the front court. As Washam gets it over to Graves. She has it blocked and is taken by Norfolk. They work it to Blanchard. Now has the ball deflected and taken to the front court. That was into the hands of Liz Shetty. And she'll be fouled. Oh, Norfolk and the Lady Panthers crowd can feel it. You said they haven't won a title. This is going to be a big time crown going back to North Central Arkansas. That makes it a 10 point game. Now. Megan Upton comes in the ball game. Second one's good. 11 point game. Bring it up is Davis. Looks at left side to Graves. She'll pull up a deep three. It's good. 47 39. Now we've got a timeout on the floor. It'll be a full timeout charge to Blanchard Spring, Mammoth Spring, excuse me. And with 18 seconds left, Bobby, you got a big, big hill to climb. Yeah, you got to go for the steal on the inbound, give up the foul immediately. But again, you've got to get a little help on the other side. Norfolk hasn't been exceptional at the foul line, but they've certainly hit just enough, 10 of 17 from the stripe. You look at this contest. They're better for the three-point line. They are the free throw line. Seven of ten from distance yeah. is Norfolk. You don't, don't see know, that very often. I've ever seen a game where a team shot 70% from the three-point line. But hey, that's why they spend all those hours in the gym during the summer and the fall getting ready for this point. They've played a ton of games. This is their 40th contest. Not a bad time to say, hey, you know what? Let's shoot our best game of the season from the three-point line. There's 18 seconds left in this one. As I talked about a moment ago, neither team has ever won a state championship game, and looks like Norfolk is well on their way. Inbound pass. Comes to Blanchard, and she'll be fouled. Based on the stats, that's who you want to foul. Blanchard's 0 for 3 from the foul line. Can erase all those woes right here. And she misses again. Coach Stewart 
wait until the final minute of this contest to take the pullover off. It's getting a little hot in here in the final minute. <laughs> Sanchi makes the second one. Now, you, know, you and I talked about it. It was getting a little warm in here. As here's Washam. She'll drive, get the bucket, and they'll get the ball in. Stolen away, and the bucket was put back in by Davis, but it's not enough. Your class 1A girl state champion, Norfolk. They win it 48-43. What a fourth quarter for Norfolk. It's going to be a little skewed by those last two buckets. The Lady Panthers put together a huge run in the final eight minutes, and they earned themselves their first championship. Heck of a ball game between both these schools. You had by far the two best teams in Class 1A, and we'll talk about the MVP, and we'll crown a champion when we come back as you're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports. This month on Arkansas PBS. Meandering through the southern half of Arkansas, Bayou Bartholomew holds the distinction of being the longest bayou in the world. Consumer DNA testing used by millions, but the results can be life-changing. From outwitting rattlesnakes to aerial feats, cast of cheeky characters will reveal the secret to Squirrel's success. Only on Arkansas PBS. There they are, the champions, Norfolk. They win it 48-43 today here at Bank OZK Arena in the Class 1A Girls State Championship game. And it's the first title in school history. They, uh, they were here last year, didn't come up with the title, came back in year number two and got it done, Bobby. And it was a great performance, really, by both these squads. It really was. I mean, it, for three quarters, these two teams were neck and neck. But you got to make that run. And I, and I said it right at halftime. One of these teams is going to make a big run in the second half. And it was certainly Norfolk. And they turned it up defensively. And they got big shots. They got to the lane. I think Mammoth Springs started to wear down, started to, to press a little bit. Not, not tempo, but they started to press in their minds a little bit, especially when those shots just kept going down to a clip of 70% from the three-point line. Yeah, that was, was really impressive. And we will be able to talk with Head coach William Stewart here in a moment. And they will also name today's class 1A girls MVP. Bobby, who are you going to give that to just on the front? Of I mean, it's based on today. It's got to go to Allman. Just the way that she shot it. Of course, it's the state tournament MVP, not necessarily today, but the way that she shot the basketball, they really struggled to get anything going offensively outside of her. She kept them afloat for three quarters, and she certainly, in my eyes, would earn an MVP nod. I, I would agree with you. Allman uh, in this ball game. Had 22 points. Estes, though, had third, uh, she had 12 points in this game. She started she really strong as well. She hit a, sh a big shot early. Yeah, it was Allman. They're naming Allman the MVP for this one. Much yeah. deserved. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, anytime you come into it in any game, let alone a state championship game, an arena, that you that, from a lot of people's perception and perspective, it's tough to shoot in. Yeah. She knocks down five three-pointers all from each corner. It's a pretty impressive the way she shot it, and she carried her team today. Well, we will ha have both coach and MVP here just a in a moment as they're making their way over to the table right now. We will get Coach Stewart. And as he, he makes his way over here, Coach, how are you? I tell you what. It was a little intense at first. Yeah, let's go back to halftime. You know, you go into the locker room, you guys, it was a one-point game. What did you tell the girls at halftime? Uh, we had ten turnovers at halftime. They had four, and we were still down one point. Yeah. That was that was the key emphasis was turnovers. We were just, you know, we wasn't handling the basketball, wasn't taking care of it, wasn't being tough with it, pivoting. And uh, that was, you know, that was the emphasis. We tried to change a little bit of something on defense. They really didn't work when we come back out in the second half. But the emphasis was just turnovers. We didn't force many, and we didn't handle it. So you spent a lot of time in the gym, 40 games this year. I think Kylie Allman likes the corner. She loves the corner three. And in here, that's scary because the lights, you know, it's hard to shoot in here. And she shot it phenomenal, loves the corner three. Um, I'm so proud of them. I don't, you know, I don't even know what to say. You know, you think about last year. You guys were here last year. Allman had a, a great game here as well. Did, did you think that played your, your hand a little bit in this game? Because 
Mammoth Spring was a, a really good basketball team, but do you think that helped you guys a little bit being here once before? Yes, they're a great, they're a great team, and that's where I felt like our advantage was. I, you know, I beat them too early. They beat me four late. It was we're, we're very similar, but you know, athleticism. But the advantage we had was that we had the experience. You know, we we came here to do something. Yeah. We came here to win instead of enjoy. You know, and I'm not saying they did or didn't. But we knew what our mission was, and that, that was very, very critical for us, I think. You know, I made the comment at halftime, it's going to take one run. And you, you might have said the same thing to your team. With, with such a tight game, it's going to take one run. And the start of that fourth quarter, the first three minutes of the final period, you guys really established your will. Yes, sir. Yeah, it was. Uh, we were down five or seven. I just told them, I said, last time we got down 14 and then cut it back to three. And I told them, I said, we're down seven, five or seven. We'll stay in this run, and then we'll make one of our own. And we did, just that. Congratulations. Coach, congratulations. And, uh, Go celebrate with your team. Thank you so much, Thank guys. You, Thank, Thank you. you. That was Coach Stewart with Norfolk as the Panthers win it today by a final score of 48-43. We're waiting on the MVP to make her way over and talk with us. And really, I mean, Bobby, talking about Kylie Allman and her shooting ability, if she doesn't hit those threes early on in this ball game, it gets out of hands. Uh, yeah, I think you have a much different ball game. And as she makes her way over here, Kylie Allman, is our most valuable player. And Kylie, uh, we were just talking about this game. You kind of turned it around with the three-point shot. Uh, that corner, you, you've gotten really excited today, and you really enjoy hanging out in the corner over there, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So really, when you, when you guys go in the locker room, I asked your coach, you're down one at halftime. You'd made a couple three-point shots, but you really turned it on there in the second half. What did he tell you guys at halftime? Just what he normally tells us, but he just mostly main thing we talked about was turnovers because we had a bunch in the first half. But well, that was really a A lot of teams struggle shooting in this in this gym. You were here last year. Yeah. How much did playing here last year help you gain some confidence shooting it? I think since we were kind of more familiar in, with the gym than Mammoth was, and we were already more like ready to play and yeah. they were like, they were like us last year, just more in awe that they got here. Well, Kylie, hey, congratulations. Thank uh, you. You guys won your first state championship in school history. Ever. Uh, ever, yeah. And so uh, congratulations. Go celebrate with your team. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. That was Kylie Holman as she and her team win the 2022 1A Girls State Championship. More basketball to come as it's the 1A boys up next. You're watching the Centennial Bank State Basketball Championships on Arkansas PBS Sports.